and welcome to FunnelToDonald.com and today we are into the fourth video of the series of nine videos and uh, we have completed the dead weight calculation as you know considering three examples and uh, today we will be using the Lodicator and uh, we will be devising the storage pre-storage plan uh, basis uh, the example number one whereby the loading was at Usluga and uh, the discharging was at uh, Ghent and Dunkirk. Just in case if you have not uh, gone through that video I would advise you to click the link in the description below and uh, you can watch that video in case you are not clear with the topic of how to perform the deadweight calculation and uh, after that I would advise you to watch this video whereby we are using the Lodicator and going ahead with creating the pre-store plan for the same voyage and first of all my apologies for uh, the bad audio quality because uh, i'm recording this on ship and uh, we don't have uh, proper equipments over here so anyways moving on and um, any queries any problems you can always write to us at uh, ask at the rate funnel to double dot com and additionally you can put your queries in the comment section below so let us ahead we are using the oec load master program which is a loading computer system and uh, we are using it on windows we have got three options over here oec load master which takes you to the main program system and which ends the program and loading sequence this is used to devise the loading sequence so let us first go to the main program click it it'll take some time and as you can see a general condition has been open where everything is not acceptable and you can see the drafts they're very less because everything is zero i would advise you to get familiarized with your loadicator program i would uh, advise you to go through the manuals through the test tested uh, approved stability conditions of your ship it gives you a very good insight into what you can achieve out of your ship and how your ship will behave once uh, during the loading and during the discharging operation and during the voyage three different ships will have different kind of loadicator and like i said go through the instruction manual to get an insight and familiarization with your loadicator program on board but let's go to file and uh, we will open a condition i've already saved the condition it's by the name of uh, i will just go to the INIT which means the initial data the date I have fed as today's date let's say today is 8th of January 2021 the title I have put is example 1 Usluga to Ghent and condition at score if you remember uh, the limiting point of that voyage was at score whereby the vessel was uh, transiting from the summer zone to the winter zone and in this condition in this situation i have named this condition at score so first of all i'll be devising the condition as the limiting at the limiting point of the voyage which is at score the ship's name i have written as f2 ship and whatever ship name you have you can always uh, put over here and then uh, the constant is 343 three, which is uh, the ship's uh, default constant and uh, the c condition and uh, specific gravity of seawater i would advise you to keep always at ocean because in port it's good to only check but it's much better the report at ocean this is only for um, a sound judgment and to keep a good allowance at hand with respect to the sf and the bm value the specific gravity of the water while passing score that is at the at the condition which we are talking about is one and the load water line is uh, winter so i will keep it to winter like you know as per the example number one we had this dead weight calculation at score whereby we have calculated that we can load a cargo of 75,830 metric tons at Usluga bases the limiting point at score so at score you can carry a maximum of 75,830 metric tons of coal cargo without exceeding the winter marks so this is what 
the conclusion of this uh, of that video was so we will create the same condition in the lubricator and we'll check can we carry this cargo so the first thing over here is the fuel oil which is expected while passing scope the total quantity is 1115 so let us make this condition and put the deductibles in an order which is shown in the picture let me make all the cargo hold zero idea behind determining the condition first at the limiting point is that whether you will be able to carry the cargo of 75,830 tons or not so this is the question which we are seeking an answer for and this condition currently what we are making will give an, will give us an answer as to whether we can or not I'm not changing the constant over here because this is the default constant of the ship if you can see in our calculation the constant has been taken as default constant only just in case if you get higher or lower constant you can always modify it over here but we are not doing that because we are using this ship as relatively very new and we are keeping the same constant let us move ahead and check the cargo hold in the cargo hold all values are zero i have not put anything because we need to fill this up and create the pre-store plan but what I have done is I have fit in the stowage factor of the cargo or you can put the specific gravity which is nothing but the density of the cargo I would advise you that when you are devising the pre stow plan you should take the maximum stowage factor of the cargo which will give you an idea whether your holes will be filled or not whether you will be able to take that cargo or not once you are at the terminal or before arriving the terminal it is the shipper's duty to give you a shipper declaration in the shipper declaration the storage factor will always be mentioned you should update your loadicator condition with the storage factor which is stated on the shipper's declaration because that is deemed to be true and very accurate and obviously it brings you to the safe side because your calculations are in line with the shipper's declaration very few people do that I will advise you to do this so we will make the loadicator condition similar to this condition so I hope it is very clear let's move ahead and create this condition first of all the fuel oil should be 1115 so I'll go to fuel oil tank and I have put it as 1145 that and the diesel oil is 162 so the DOT which is diesel oil tank is 200 so we need to reduce this weight let's say uh, 100 and after that it should be 60 this becomes 162 I will go to fuel oil tank and I will reduce this change to zero so if you can see over here we have got triple one five the fuel oil similar to the condition similar to this the diesel oil is 162 which is already mentioned here in the weight column then the fresh water is 150 tons so we'll go to the fresh water drinking water i have put it as 110 so what i will do is i'll make it 50. so i have got 150 which is 150 or uh, 150 tons of fresh water total then let us go to the calculation and see the slop and the sewage so we have got a gray water holding tank in the tab others so i have put 20 over here then comes our unpumpable ballast which is 150 tons if you can see so i will go to the ballast water tank and i'll try to put some unpumpable uh, leaving more unpumpable in bigger tanks and lesser unpumpable in smaller tanks so the condition is set the only thing is that we have to play around with the cargo hold figures in order to make sure that you carry the cargo of 75,830 
as you know that all our tabs are updated as per the condition at score we shall be now putting in values for the cargo hold but before that like i said a very important thing you need to update the storage factor as accurately as possible uh, obviously for this you will be using the mspc code and if you have shippers declaration at hand that would be the best way of doing it to use the value which has been stated in your shippers declaration because it will be close to accurate and it is a responsibility of uh, the shipper to provide accurate uh, uh, description of the cargo which he is uh, loading on board your ship so we are on the cargo hold tab section and let us start to fill it up and uh, a lot of people start filling up the weight but i prefer doing the volumes first let's say i want to load cargo hold number one to the 95 percent capacity cargo hold number two to let's say 99 percent capacity cargo hold number three to let's say 97 percent capacity cargo hold number four it's very important i want to keep it to about uh, 50 percent of capacity the reason is i will let you know later it's because of the bm which is the bending moment which constitutes to sag of the ship i don't want to load more cargo in cargo hold number four otherwise uh, the vessel will be sagging a lot and which will lead to loss of cargo now, i will explain to you this uh, in a little bit of time but before that we'll first distribute the cargo quickly coming to cargo hold number five we let's say it's about 95 percent cargo hold number six is 99 percent and cargo hold number seven is again 99 percent so now the total cargo is over here at 74,337 tons the weight of the cargo depending upon the storage factor which is provided the volume is also mentioned in this column the weight is mentioned in the column as you can see and over to the right side on the screen you can see the draft marks as stated the forward draft is lesser than the aft draft so clearly you have a trim of about uh, 15 centimeters first of all let us make uh, the cargo as 75,830 tons so you are left with let's say 75,830 tons minus 74337 which gives you 1,493 tons of cargo which is almost 1,500 tons of cargo let's try to accommodate this in the in our cargo hold somewhere let us increase in cargo hold number four let's say it's about 60 percent so it is much closer now this figure uh, let's say I want to increase a little bit more in cargo hold number uh, five let's say I want to bring it to 96 percent and I want to increase cargo hold number one also to 96 percent you can see the changes in the uh, draft and now it has gone down by head by one centimeter so but the cargo has increased to 75,659 again I will uh, load it a little bit more cargo let's say about 97% in cargo hold number 5 and uh, I got uh, 75,773 tons of cargo let's see that how much cargo is remaining to load 75,830 was to be loaded and we have loaded 75773 so we have to load 57 tons of cargo more let's say i want to push this 57 tons of cargo in six in uh, cargo hold number four okay so i will just add to the figure already six five four five six six zero two i will put six six zero two over here so 
So we have got a cargo of 75,830. If you can see the corresponding draft is 14.19. Our winter draft is 14.185, which is rounded off to 14.19 because this low decatur is not giving three decimal places. So if you see, it's perfectly fine in this situation. The forward draft is 14.19 and the aft draft is 14.18. The trim is one centimeter down by head, which we can obviously control by pushing some cargo from cargo hole number four to cargo hole number five. Let's see if we can do this. Let's say I want to put a figure of 6550 and I want to put a figure of One 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 zero zero. I need to put fourteen tons of cargo more. So one 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 four. This looks fine if you can see on your right. So fourteen decimal one eight and after is fourteen decimal one nine. So this one centimeter is almost negligible. The point what you should take away from here is approximately this should be the stowage. This should be the most likely storage of your cargo and most of you will agree to it but i would say no and why is that because we need to check the longitudinal strength tab which shows that where is our sag going the red line if you can see corresponds to the bending moment of the ship the bending moment gives you an overall idea about whether the ship is hogging or sagging as you know the sagging moment in this condition is more that means the vessel will be sagging beyond her winter marks which will make her overloaded we don't want that in any situation please do not overload the vessel in any situation you should make sure that you do not overload the ship and that is where the sag allowance comes into play if you would have seen in my example number two and three whereby i have uh, taken into account sag allowance uh, and that is the reason why we do so especially when we are loading to the marks but this is what more or less your uh, pre-store plan looks like okay so you can you have already checked the condition looks fine the intact stability everything is fine visibility criteria is also being met with so and uh, let's go through the dead weight calculation you can see that the dead weight is four times seven zero it's same over here fuel oil is one 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 five so fuel oil is one 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 five the diesel oil is 162 you can see fresh water is 150 ballast water unpumpable is 150 and others is 20 the constant is 343 and you got a displacement of 90398 which is same as your dead weight calculation so you can very well see that the dead weight calculation performed by you initially corresponds accurately to the lodicator calculation and this is what is important the condition is perfect the pre-store plan looks very good on paper i would have really made 200 tons to 250 tons lesser cargo over here in this situation cargo which is 200 tons less than what we calculated it means 75,630 so I need to reduce 50 tons more from here which will give me 5950 and you can see that I have got a, about 2 centimeters of sag allowance in hand and if you see the longitudinal strength we are still sagged a little bit sagged but the sag has reduced a little bit less sag moment has reduced a bit but you see that this is 14.16 um, midship draft in case you sag by let's say two to three centimeters also then also you are safe so this is what i'm talking about uh, when i'm talking about sag allowance and that is why it is important for you to take sag allowance into consideration Reverting back to the initial figure of 6150, 
back again we are on 14.19 and without any sag allowance the condition looks acceptable so what i want to say is that you have to make sure the initial con condition corresponds your fuel your diesel fresh water ballast water and slop tanks everything corresponds to the dead weight calculation which you have uh, the figures are in the dead weight calculation which you have taken into account and after that you can just play around with the cargo hold figures and uh, manipulate the percentage fill rather than going by the weight it becomes a little cumbersome when you play with the weight playing with the volume becomes a little easier uh, rough uh, thumb rule on a panamax carrier can be filling up cargo hold number two 200 person and cargo hold number seven to 100 person and then you can manipulate the other accordingly obviously you will be keeping cargo hold number four less so make sure you uh, do the right thing and uh, keep the sag allowance also into consideration so if we take this ship in reverse to the loading port only three things will change the fuel oil the diesel oil and the fresh water and also the slop could change if you have not pumped it out so so if you remember in example number one we have also performed the dead weight calculation at Usluga whereby we have shown the cargo to be loaded at 75,830 depending upon the limiting point at score the light ship is 12628 and all the other deductibles as mentioned so let us feed these deductibles into our present condition and take the ship reverse to Usluga and see that what kind of condition do we get from get there so I'll make this as 100 I will fill this up as 100 so I got 200 over here I'll go to fuel oil tank I have got one number 5 DO empty what I will do is I will put 30 tons over there And the fuel oil remains same only thing is diesel oil has changed to 230 so i have put 100 and 30 over here so 230 diesel oil the fresh water has also changed the fresh water as per the calculation is 110 so let us bring it to 110 The slop is again 20 which is safe so now if you see that everything becomes red and the reason why everything has become red is because we have put the condition to be in winter zone but it is not the loading port is in summer zone and if we change it to summer we are perfectly fine this condition is acceptable you can check also the condition is acceptable but the only thing remains now is to make the departure on the even keel we have a trim of about three centimeters we will shift the cargo from aft and put it in forward part so that we get the vessel to depart at even keel so let's do this condition at Osloga. Let me just rename the condition at Osloga. The load line is summer. The gravity specific gravity is one. Let me just change the stowage plan. It looks fine to me. 75,830. Let me just push some cargo from here to number one. So what I'll do is I'll use this hole, hole number six, one, two. 760 let's say 10 tons and I put it in 1 2 6 1 0 so you got 2 centimeters let's do a little again I'll put 30 20 tons more which will make 1 2 6 3 0 and I will reduce the cargo over here 30 tons which will 1 2 7 3 0 put one two seven four zero so we have made the vessel to be at even keel with nil trim so 
now you can see that the forward and aft drafts are same and the trim is zero and the vessel is at even keel and you have got bending moments also in control uh, I'm, I'm saying this because I have not taken into account the sag allowance uh, in example number two and three we shall be taking sag allowance into consideration that's why I always tell everyone to take sag allowance into consideration no matter how much the charters um, or the sub charters push you always take into account the sag allowance because if the vessel gets overloaded uh, people will be catching your collar and uh, the authorities will be catching your collar and you will be the one to be blamed and uh, not anyone else um, so uh, make sure you never overload the ship uh, it's an offense and it's the violation of load line regulation so this is what our storage plan or the pre storage plan becomes so we will note down these figures also the volume and the percentage fill of all the holes we shall be noting down and uh, this is how our stowage looks like. We'll just check again. The condition looks acceptable. Everything looks fine. And uh, I've already named it as Usloga. And uh, this is what how it becomes uh, at the at the port. So the departure condition at load port will be something like this, and uh, the stowage will be something like this which we already have discussed now let us take this ship back again to score and see how it behaves so in fuel oil tank what we'll do is put at put it as zero in the diesel oil tank uh, i will uh, i'll put it as 162 so i will just put as 162 I have fresh water as uh, 50 tons over here so making it 150 tons and ballast water is 150 others is also 20 so you can see that the vessel is down by head slightly that is uh, about one centimeter which doesn't make a difference but uh, because you're underway and uh, but the point in consideration is that you're not exceeding any draft limitations over here and on the paper it looks really good if you would have taken sag allowance into consideration it would have been the best so now as per the uh, regulation you should always uh, check that the stability criteria is met at each leg of the voyage so at departure load port you have already checked that the uh, conditions are acceptable transiting score you have checked the condition are acceptable now you should take the vessel to ghent and in that case you just have to change the fuel oil tank which the diesel oil tank the fresh water four things you have to play around with because the cargo hold remains same and check what are the drafts over there since you are consuming food fuel and you're not taking any bunkers or replenishing water midway so the drafts will be lesser than what you are seeing over here and at all stages of voyage you will be definitely complying the only thing is that you might go slightly down by head but that will always be corrected automatically because you are generating about 30 tons 25 to 30 tons of fresh water every day since generation of fresh water is more than uh, the consumption of uh, the fuel on this ship so you will always be close to even keel when you arrive uh, dunkirk and ghent and you can change the values and check uh, that what is the arrival drafts at the discharge port so it's very simple should can be done by yourself do let us know in the comment section below just in case you ex encounter any queries or some uh, confusions we, we shall be happy to help you thank you so much for watching this video and the next video we shall be taking up example number two and uh, discussing the same in detail thank you so much have a nice day bye